Working as cabin crew is a dream job for many people, but you have to get past a whole load of weird requirements at the assessment stage before even being hired. Keep watching to learn the insanely precise makeup rules flight attendants have to follow, and rules that are even more absurd. To see more videos like this on the TACO, hit the subscribe button. Now, let's get started with 10 weird requirements to work as a flight attendant. Long arm span. You might have already heard that you have to be a certain height to be a flight attendant, but did you know that you also need to have a certain arm reach too. It sounds pretty odd at first, but it's actually down to a very practical reason. Cabin crew need to be able to safely lift heavy carry-on luggage into overhead compartments. If you can't reach, then you can't do that job. Arm strength comes into it too, with most airlines requiring flight attendants to be able to carry around 10 kilograms with a height of 170 centimeters. Airplanes actually place restrictions on people applying for jobs with them in terms of arm span. These vary slightly from airline to airline. Emirates and Qatar both have the most demand demanding requirements asking for a minimum arm reach of 212 centimeters. That's a whopping 83.5 inches. You can test at home whether you'd make the cut, stretch out your arms, and stand on your tippy toes. But bear in mind you have to be barefoot. You also have to be a minimum of 5 foot 3 inches tall to be Emirates cabin crew. Certain airlines also put limits on maximum height too. For example, ABS Jets has a maximum height restriction of 172 centimeters, which is less than 5 foot 8 inches. Talk about strict. Healthy BMI Although times are changing, many airlines have body weight restrictions. The way they measure this is by requesting healthy results on a body mass index test. That means body fat percentage based on a person's height and weight. Some flight attendants have claimed that they've been weighed annually to prove their BMI. Although such body monitoring sounds shocking, airlines explain that it's not just about appearances. It's actually to do with practical reasons such as being able to fit in jump seats and harnesses. Flight attendants have to be able to fit comfortably through an emergency exit window too. But sometimes airlines take the BMI testing shockingly far. In 2015, Air India made headlines after it warned 600 of its 3,500 cabin crew members to lose weight within six months. If they didn't, they risked being taken off the flights and given a job on the ground. After that period was up, it planned to remove 130 cabin crew members from duty because their BMI levels were still above the limit after reassessment. The airline required female flight attendants to have a BMI between 8 18 and 22, and male attendants to be between 18 and 25. No visible tattoos. If you have a visible tattoo, then you could struggle to get a job as a flight attendant. Many airlines have explicit rules about body art. The general rule is that your inkings cannot be on display, sometimes even if they're in a place that would be covered by your uniform. Take British Airways, for example. They're pretty clear about their uniform policy on their cabin crew FAQ page. The airline states that tattoos must never be visible outside the uniform, so you definitely can't have a tat on your face, neck, or arms. For female cabin crew, that includes legs and feet as well. That's because of the particular kinds of shoes they have to wear and the thinness of the tights. But it gets more complicated. Because the British Airway uniform shirts are white, you have to take extra precaution if you have a tattoo on your back or torso. They require flight attendants to wear an appropriate white undergarment if they have a tattoo on their upper body. This is to ensure that the inking is in no way visible through the uniform shirt. Think you can cover your tattoos with plasters, tights, jewelry, or watches? Think again. That is definitely not permitted. Limited Jewelry As for piercings, you're only allowed a single ear piercing with British Airways and most other airlines, and that can be no more than 10 millimeters in diameter. As for the earrings themselves, you're limited to one set of round ones. No nose studs, tongue piercings or retainers, or other visible body piercings are allowed with BA. The jewelry rules are strict at Emirates, too. When it comes to earrings, you're limited to pearls or studs that are diamond or crystal. As for necklaces, they're not allowed. You are allowed to wear a watch, but it has to be plain and simple. United Airlines also has a long list of requirements when it comes to jewelry. Flight attendants are only allowed one pair of matching earrings, no larger than a U.S. quarter. Hoop and drop styles are allowed, but no larger than a U.S. dime. No cuffs and no other visible body piercings are allowed. When it comes to rings, only four may be worn and no more than two on each hand. To make it more strict, the rings are not permitted on thumbs or knuckles. A single strand necklace is allowed, but it can't be longer than 20 inches or wider than a quarter of an inch. Plus, no chokers or pendants larger than a square. Inch. Charm bracelets aren't allowed, but one plain metal bracelet no wider than half an inch is allowed on each wrist.
conventional hair. Love your rainbow hair? Or have you fallen for your pink shade? You better get rid of it quick if you want to work as a flight attendant. Many airlines have specific restrictions on hair color and style. Take American Airlines. They don't allow extreme hair color or style while their cabin crew are wearing a flight attendant uniform. Well, at least you can use your washout hair chalks on your day off. This is typical of airlines' rules. Most of them require their cabin crew to have clean hair in a natural color. If you want to dye your hair, it has to be a natural shade. As for style, you can't rock up with a mohawk either. British Airways states that male cabin crew must have a conventional style when it comes to their hair. This means it should be appropriate for professional environments. For men, that means they aren't allowed long hair, a shaved head, or a sculptured style. At JetBlue, the style of female cabin crew's hair is very specific too. It has to be tied back off the face in a single ponytail. No side ponies though, as it has to be secured behind the ears and centered on the back of the head. No high ponies either, as it should be no higher than the top of the ears and no longer than the tops of the shoulders. No smoking. Of course, smoking is banned on aircraft, but what about the cabin crew's own smoking habits? You'd think what flight attendants do in their spare time wouldn't be relevant to their employers. However, when it comes to nicotine, many airlines have rules in place. When Buell Airways was advertising for cabin crew in Uganda, it made the specific requirement for all applicants to be free of all nicotine for at least six months prior to submitting applications. Alaska Airlines also requested that applicants for their coveted cabin crew roles were free from all nicotine use for at least half a year. That's before they've even submitted their resume. So, if you're a smoker, you need to give yourself a 26-week lead-up to even applying for a job after you've kicked the habit. That's some forethought required right there. It makes sense, though, as giving up nicotine and starting a stressful new job would be a bad combination. At Kadar Airways, flight attendants aren't even allowed to have tobacco products inside their home, let alone use them. So, it's clear that if you want to be a flight attendant, you need to be totally tobacco free. Good eyesight. Jet Airways requires good eyesight to be a flight attendant, but what exactly does that mean? It means you can kiss your chances of being a member of cabin crew goodbye if there are any substantial difficulties with your vision. Did you hear the rumor that you can't be a pilot if you're colorblind? Well, it's not quite as straightforward as that, but it is true that your eyesight is tested when you want to fly a plane, and the same goes for being a flight attendant. There are certain medical examinations that you have to take if you want to work in the sky, and that includes vision. The Civil Aviation Authority Authority, or CAA for short, details the requirements for the medical certification of air crew on its website, including guidance in relation to color vision. Most airlines require their cabin crew to have diopters between plus and minus four. In some cases, that figure extends to plus and minus five. But if your vision prescription is more than that, you'll find your chances of becoming a cabin crew are limited. That's because you won't be able to pass the eye test. The Ishihara test checks your visual acuity and color vision. This is a way of detecting color blindness. If you fail that, then you won't won't get the job. For those planning on corrective eye surgery, it has to be completed at least six months before interview. Clear skin. We've already seen how important appearance is for flight attendants, so it's no surprise that your face has to be just right. When Jet Airways posted a job advert, it listed a whole bunch of requirements. Amongst the most striking were those detailed under the title Physical Features. These included a clear complexion and went so far as to say that scars, pimples, and blemishes were not acceptable. That makes it pretty obvious why cabin crew members have to be skilled at applying makeup. It's pretty much impossible for everyone to be entirely free from blemishes. The odd pimple will spring up every now and then, but if you have a breakout at the same time as your interview, then you can probably kiss goodbye your chances of being hired. Or you can get handy with the concealer and foundation and do a perfect cover job. In fact, in the British Airways Uniform Handbook, it states that obvious blemishes should be concealed wherever possible. The same goes for male flight attendants who are required to cover up skin conditions with concealer. However, if male cabin crew are wearing makeup to conceal blemishes, it mustn't be on the shirt or tie. Which makes us perfectly on to our last entry in the weirdest requirements to work as a flight attendant. Precise makeup. Certain airlines have very strict rules about makeup, and Emirates is one of the most precise. A flight attendant for the airline explained that her employer likes to keep uniformity. That's why there's an actual imaging and grooming department all of its own. They outline which varieties of red nail polish are allowed. Emirates cabin crew members can also go for pink, nude, or French manicure nails. But when it comes to lipstick, it's even more exact. There's an Emirates red lipstick, which has to be worn with lip liner. It has to match the uniform's hat. Max Russian red is a favorite choice as it stays put for a long time. As for the eyeshadow, black and beige are both loud and liquid eyeliner is recommended. If you're unsure about application, then you needn't worry as there are classes on how to do your makeup and care for your skin. In fact, part of the training program is one full day spent on grooming. There's even a manual with all of the makeup rules in it. We know, crazy. As for United Airlines, there are also rules on the length of fingernails. They can't be 
longer than half an inch from the fingertip and should be even in length and shape. All of these weird requirements just go to show that there's more to being a flight attendant than meets the eye. Now, would you want to be a flight attendant? Which of these weird requirements shocks you the most? Let us know in the comments and please give this video a big thumbs up. Thanks for watching and see you next time on The Taco.